All right, so this week um, I've got somebody on my list that I need to get done here, and uh, this is a commission for Iaz. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm saying that correctly. Sorry if I'm not. He uh, wants a kind of a semi-enclosed bowl, and I believe it's for his wife. And uh, this will be the third casting from that large maple burl that I used before. And along with the burl, so I think that we're going to be able to cut this down and reuse a portion of this as well. Um, he wants to use some emerald green, a fan favorite. So uh, that's what we're going to do in this video. First things first, we're going to go over to the bandsaw, uh, cut this up. I've got a template here for my bucket and um, <laughs> we'll see what we can get out of this. Uh, it's a pretty gnarly piece of wood and we know that the gnarly pieces of wood make the best pieces. So what I want to do with this piece of burl is make a flat spot on the bottom and then that way I can put it down on the bed of the bandsaw and I'll be able to cut off the top portion of this because this piece is way too tall. Didn't get it exactly perfect the first time so I just brought the fence up cut maybe about an eighth of an inch off. That flattened it. Put that against the fence. Uh, I think it was about five and a quarter was the measurement I used. Then of course there's a template for the bucket. I'll cut this piece off and then I'll be able to use the top piece that I already cut off in the casting as well. Uh, I try to make my burl go as far as I can. Uh, it's, I know that for some people it's really, really tough to get, you know, and it's not easy for me to get as well, but people know what I do and um, I get contacted regularly asking me if I want burl. So that's how I end up with a lot of my burls, if you're curious. And for those that are looking for burls, you know, you, you can probably put an ad in, say, uh, Craigslist or Kijiji and looking for burls and you might be surprised what you scare up. Anyway, once we get these trimmed up, I'll be able to use the brass brush here in the lathe, clean up all the little nasty bits and give the surface of the burl a tooth for the resin to bond to. Alright guys, you can see I got a couple more pieces. Did that off camera. I'm going to glue these in place because there's just too many of them to that have the chance of moving around and that's not cool. The last thing you want is for any of these pieces to move around because it can really totally ruin your casting. So, you know, I would prefer to use this method over, say, trying to put a weight in there. I know that people say, how come I don't use mold release? Well, this is one of the reasons. Uh, anyway, it's important that these pieces don't move around. There, those shouldn't be going anywhere. Let's mix up some resin. I'm going to be using deep casting epoxy again from Designer Epoxy. And I will remind you about the deal that Designer Epoxy has done for my channel. So from 1 July to 1 September 2023, you will receive free shipping within Continental USA and 10% off your order. And along with that, you'll also get five color packs. So that's designerepoxy.ca. Check them out. They make an awesome product. And of course, use code Inlay Gym at checkout. All right. This is the first liter and a half. I'm betting that there's going to be three of these total. This will bring it to four and a half liters, and I think we'll call it there. Okay, what I want to do is actually throw this in the vacuum chamber for a little bit. And, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll top it up from there. Since one of those pieces was really kind of rotten and punky, I figured it was best to do this. It probably wasn't absolutely necessary, but when this casting comes out of the pressure pot and get it shaped, there's not really a lot to uh, fix on it. So, you know, I think that 
it was beneficial to do this and that's why I did this and I know that some people are probably going to wonder why I did it but that's the reason why. All right, I've been able to pull full vacuum. Uh, I'm just going to top this up with three quarters of a liter and then do another quick little draw on it and then it'll go into the pressure pot. One of the most commonly asked questions is if I could only afford to buy one, which would I buy, the vacuum chamber or the pressure pot? I would say probably the vacuum chamber would probably be the number one. Uh, but with that said, the pressure pot certainly has its, its uh, place in my work. So if you can swing the cost of both of them, uh, using the, both of them together will give you a much better casting. There you go, that's full vacuum. I'll let that go over, yeah, probably about another 10 minutes. And I'll put it in the pressure pot. And see you guys in there in three days. All right, 72 hours later, resin looks like it's dipped off on the sides, which is kind of strange, but resin does weird things, or I should say epoxy does weird things. All right, let's uh, try and get this out. I didn't use any mold release, so... Hmm. That wasn't so bad. The great thing about using templates is of course, you can find your center easily with them. And then that way, when it's mounted on the lathe, it actually runs true straight off the bat. That way you're able to pick up the speeds a little quicker than you ordinarily would. Uh, I love this method and highly recommend it. Not going to get any better than that. So you may find that the audio is a little different and that's because I'm actually uh, doing the editing and the voiceover in a uh, fifth wheel trailer in New Brunswick. <laughs> so we're down here to uh, visit with family and to meet with our builder. And for those who are not aware, we plan on building a new house and a new workshop in next spring, in the spring of 24. So we met with our builder yesterday and basically went over everything and um, he still has to get back with us with a price, but um, we're hoping that things are going to go smoothly with it. We might even put the foundation in for the workshop in the fall and then that way we can actually, uh, he can build on it first thing in the spring because I told him that the priority for me is to get the workshop done so that I have a place to work and then that way I can keep my channel going because I definitely want to keep doing that. But I'm um, still waiting to hear back on the cost of what the project's going to be. Uh, a little scared about that, <laughs> not going to lie. Uh, building uh, building materials right now are crazy and, and they're going up. I don't know why they are because interest rates are going up in this country and it's kind of stalling a lot of people as far as building and buying houses are concerned. So hopefully that... Um, Hopefully it comes down by next year and it's a little more affordable than what what uh, he's going to come back with this. But we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, but it was it was nice to sit down with him and go over the plans and tell him exactly what we want so that um, he can work on it first thing in the spring. And hopefully there's no channel interruptions. But, you know, it's, I, I can't guarantee anything. And it's, it's still very, very much undecided right now because of course we still have to sell our house yeah in our current location 
But um, anyway, that's why the audio is off a little bit. If for those of you who are wondering, I'm kind of sitting at a table with uh, an overhang, so it's probably um, causing that to happen. But anyway, what I want to do with this piece, like I do with all of these pieces, strip off all of the excess epoxy, strip off any ghosting. So, you know, I'm trying to expose all the wood. And then once that's done, I can basically determine what's going to be up and what's going to be down. Because at this point, this piece could go in either direction. After looking at the piece, I've determined that this is going to be the bottom. So all I'm doing here is just flattening uh, an, an area where I can stick a glue block on. And you'll see me also turn a tenon on the top of this so that I can turn it around and grab it with a chuck. And then that way we can get rid of it little nub that the drive center is sitting on. That way when we put the glue block on, it sits nice and flat. But uh, yeah, I mean, so far I'm really happy with this piece the way it looks. At this point, I don't see any cracks, certainly no thermal cracking, so that's a real bonus. The big problem with this tendon was that it was all epoxy and of course epoxy can be fragile. I find after 72 hours that the epoxy is cured but it, it's not like after a week it's going to be really kind of brittle if you will. So at this stage it isn't really truly brittle. So I didn't really lock it down tightly in the jaws. I locked it down tight enough that I was confident that it wasn't going to come off the lathe but eventually I'm going to have to pull the tailstock away and just get rid of that little nub and then of course we'll be able to use some sandpaper on it rough the surface up and then we'll be able to put a blue, glue block on this uh, just be careful if you're going to use resin tenons because they certainly can fracture on you and um, light, super light touches here at this stage if this came off the lathe it probably would still be okay but, of course, if it was thinned out, that would be a different story. There is the waste block that I'm going to put on the bottom. This is a piece of white ash. Do yourself a favor. Do not use softwoods for your tenons. Softwoods cannot take the abuse that hardwoods can. And it would really, really be painful to see a project like this come off the lathe because you used a... Uh, <laughs> some old 2x4 or something like that. So I only ever use hardwood um, for any of the tendons that you see me glue on here. And uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of hardwood. Uh, birch is fine too. But uh, just do yourself a favor and stay away from the softwoods. My intention is to save as much of this as I can, so I do plan on doing coring. So I've reversed the piece now, and I want to true it up, make sure that it's running nice and true before we start to do that. That way, hopefully, there's not as much vibration as 
you may get if it isn't trued up. So again, do yourself a favor. If you reverse these and you plan on doing any coring with them, you should go do the outside, true it up, and that way, hopefully, you're not dealing with a lot of vibration when you're doing the core. We're all set up and ready for coring. This is the one-way coring rig. You can get it at oneway.ca. I've got the Core Pro Cutter from Hunter Tool Systems in, and we're going to see that eat up this resin and burrow really quickly. I uh, can't use tailstock support yet. Not until we get in the cutter a little further. And it's the number one knife set is what I get in. All right, let's see what we can save out of this blank. Now I know that you've heard me rave about this Core Pro Cutter from Hunter Tools, but I'm telling you right now, this is an awesome, awesome tool, great addition to your workshop. If you do any amount of coring, it is in your best interest to get one of these. This The price of it is, I'm not going to say, you know, it's, it's not cheap, but it will pay you back and I don't know how many cuts I've got on this. It just keeps going on and on and on. Uh, anybody that does resin and, and wood, well, especially resin and burl combos, will know how tough it is to cut. And this thing just eats it up. The only problem that I've got is that I'm not able to extract the knife set to clear the chips away. So that's what the compressed air is for. And again, thanks again to John Tully for sending that, the tailstock extension. Uh, that's a really awesome thing and I'm, I'm glad that he sent it to me. Unfortunately, I haven't seen those for sale commercially anywhere. Uh, so lucky me, I got one from John and I really do appreciate it. I was able to pick up the speed near the end here. Uh, and for the most part, I think that the rest of this turning is done at 1,500 RPM. And there's a beautiful little core for us to work with in the future. Uh, I'm starting to collect these and I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with them. Uh, anyway, it would be interesting if you have some ideas as to what you'd like to see me do with these cores. Uh, I'm certainly open to those suggestions. I actually was thinking about taking one and making a reverse box out of it. And um, But anyway, there's a number of things that probably can be done with these cores. And if you got any ideas, share them with me. I would greatly appreciate it. And there's a beautiful surface. Pretty much ready for sanding at this point. Awesome. Due to the shape of this, of course, we're going to leave a lot of material left in what I like to call the belly of the bowl. So I just, I debated on leaving a little bit of a flat top and then I decided to round it off. I think that was the right choice for this piece. Uh, you will see that there will be a lip on the inside of this. But, you know, for the most part, I'm just hogging off as much resin and burl that I can. And um, this is not a new cutter. This is, uh, I think I've got three projects on this cutter, and it's still cutting quite nicely. I think that I've rotated enough that it's coming near its end. But, I, uh, you know, pretty routine from here on. You'll see push cuts hole cuts, scraping cuts, and um, anyway, once I get this thinned out, we'll be able to sand it up and uh, get the first coat of finish on it. So I'm just going to be quiet for a minute and let you watch this video, and I'll be back in here in a, in a couple minutes.
So you may or may not notice that, you know, as I achieve the wall thickness that I'm looking for, the cuts become less and less aggressive. I'm not really concerned about it when I still had a lot of uh, thickness to deal with. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty aggressive and you'll see a fair bit of chip out and tear out. But, you know, I don't really care because when I first put that on the lathe, I probably had to easily lose an inch to an inch and a half in thickness in the belly of the bowl there. So, you know, I, I'm just kind of <laughs> not exactly the best technique, but just kind of get her done mode. And then as you get down to your wall thickness, take lighter and lighter cuts. Uh, just be careful that you're not too aggressive because you certainly can uh, get some really deep chip out that may affect uh, your overall thickness of your piece. But uh, light cuts are the key as far as chip out and tear out. And if you follow those steps, you shouldn't have any issues prior to sanding. All right, things are looking pretty good. Uh, just got some small little cracks to fill in that area down in there. Um, on the outside here, we've got a little split. Really nothing major at all. There's another one there. So what I'm going to do is use the stair bond thin to seal those cracks up. And then that way we'll be able to get right back on the lathe and get this to its first coat of finish. In total, I think I had to do some filling on the inside three times and twice on the outside with the thin CA glue from Starbond. Uh, again, another great product. And uh, the great thing about using deep cast is that it's, it stays thin for so long that it gives you know, lots of time for the epoxy to penetrate into the wood. So typically you don't have a lot of filling to do when you use deep cast and that's one of the great things that I really like about it. There, the rest of it looks good. I'll give that 10-15 minutes and then we'll get back on the lathe. This is the Phoenix I'm using, and uh, the cutter was starting to get dull on the Hercules, so I knew that there was a new cutter on this. And if you look at the shavings that are coming off of this, they're very, very fine. And that's really what you need to have here at this stage of the game. That's going to require some more CA glue. But after I get this filled a couple more times, we'll be able to get to sanding, and then, of course, the best part, getting that coat of finish on. Finally on to sanding, these are the three and a half inch dipple discs from sandpaper.ca. Another fantastic product that I absolutely recommend. This piece was sanded from 60 to 800 like I do with pretty much all of my resin and wood combinations. This is the Triple E buffing compound from the Be All Buffing System. I, a lot of people are curious where I get it. I get mine at Lee Valley here in Canada. They do ship to the U.S. as well. After this is buffed with the Triple E buffing compound to remove those fine scratches, we'll clean this up with some denatured alcohol and get it ready for its first coat of finish. All right, here's the best part. First coat of Waterlux gloss. What do you think about that? I think that is a beautiful, beautiful bowl. Spectacular burl. Spectacular resin. I really do like the emerald green. It 
goes well. There are a couple little floaties in the resin with something that's got so many fissures in it like this. I think it's almost an impossible thing not to have some. Uh, it's a beautiful bowl. Hopefully it'll only take two coats because I'm running out of time here. That resin is spectacular right there. All right, we'll see you tomorrow the second coat. This is mostly aimed at the new people that haven't watched my videos. Between coats, I used the Triple E Buffing Compound again, and I leveled the finish and take any lumps and bumps, dirt, anything that may have landed on it while it was curing overnight. And then once that's done, we'll clean it up again with the denatured alcohol and proceed with the next coat of finish. Every coat of finish gets treated like this uh, before the next coat goes on. Well, good morning. It is the second coat of Waterlux Gloss. Well, there it is in its second coat of finish, and I don't think that it's going to need any more than that. Absolutely beautiful piece. Really love that area right there. Spectacular burl. The resin's awesome. Only little thing is there's the odd little floaty bit in the resin from <laughs> this piece. With all those deep cracks, it's virtually impossible to clean out. But uh, other than that, I mean, this is a spectacular piece. All right, we'll see you tomorrow when we're doing the bottom. It is, in fact, the next day, and here I've got the piece mounted on my vacuum chuck, and I do have the complete vacuum chucking system from oneway.ca. Uh, and again, that's another fantastic tool that I highly recommend. And uh, I think I just pretty much used the gouger to clean off the waste block and the remaining glue. And then the bottom, again, was sanded from... 60 to 600 that way i'm able to write on the bottom without too many issues hopefully you enjoyed the video let's have a last look at this beautiful little bowl and hopefully the new owner loves it as much as i do all right let's have a last little chat about this beautiful bowl i absolutely love this profile these semi-enclosed bowls they show off really really nice and of course, we know that the more gnarly looking the burl is, the better looking the casting will be as a general rule. Two coats of Waterlux gloss. Here is the back side. All the details are on the wood up here. And I know it's quite busy, but the details are there. And as for normal, I'm running out of time. So there's no finish on there, but I'll take two more coats on the bottom. This piece ended up being 10 and a half inches of across at its widest point and four and a half inches tall and it's about a half inch wall thickness thereabouts and it's a beautiful beautiful bowl hopefully the new owner loves it set this down don't forget to put designer epoxy in the comments down below to be entered into the next three gallon giveaway and along with that by putting a comment down below you'll also be entered into my bowl draws or my giveaways that i do every five thousand subscribers so if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and that way I can give away some more stuff. I don't know exactly what we're going to be doing next week. Uh, I haven't really given it too much thought, but I've got a couple of things that I want to try. So uh, please come on back. Hopefully it's something cool. It will be something cool. So do please come back. All right, well, that's it. Take care. Stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. And of course, that thumbs up will always help beat the analytics. So please give me a thumbs up. All right. See you next week.